What if I told you that free will doesn't exist? That's the bold claim made by Robert Sapolsky in his latest book, Determined, A Science of Life Without Free Will. Sapolsky, a Stanford professor of biology and neurology, argues that all human behavior is determined by biology and the laws of nature, leaving no room for free will. In Determined, Sapolsky isn't just repeating a philosophical argument. He uses examples of biology, genetics, and neuroscience to support his claim. But here's the catch. None of his examples actually prove that free will isn't real. Sapolsky himself admits that you can't disprove free will with any one scientific result. This idea isn't new. In fact, Sapolsky is recycling a point made by philosopher Bertrand Russell way back in the 1940s. Russell argued that human behavior, like everything else in the universe, follows the laws of physics and chemistry. And where there's determinism, Russell said, there's no space for free will. Sapolsky's twist is to add modern science, but does it really make his case any stronger? Sapolsky says that when you combine all scientific results from all fields, there's simply no room for free will. But what does no room even mean? What kind of space would free will need? And how does determinism keep it out? Sapolsky doesn't really explain. Instead of presenting a groundbreaking argument, the book tries to poke holes in other theories of free will. Sapolsky's approach boils down to this. If a neuron in your brain is affected by previous factors, then you can't have free will. But here's the problem. There's no will at all in a single neuron, let alone free will. Think about it this way. It's like trying to find the ocean inside a single US state. Just because you don't find it there, it doesn't mean navigable oceans don't exist. Similarly, looking for free will in one neuron is missing the bigger picture. The will, like consciousness, is something that emerges from the whole person, not from any individual neuron. Now, Sapolsky does recognize some of these issues. He admits that his deterministic worldview doesn't really mesh with moral or emotional claims. For example, he argues that no one deserves anything, yet he also says that it's still good for people to feel less pain and more happiness. He even calls this view logically indefensible, which makes one wonder if he can see this contradiction in his moral reasoning, why doesn't he notice the same problem in his scientific claims? Let's break this down even further. Sapolsky says that human behavior is determined by biology and that free will can't exist because everything we do is predictable, at least in theory. But then he runs into another problem, quantum physics. At the quantum level, the universe doesn't follow the rules of determinism. It's random and unpredictable. So how does Sapolsky deal with that? Well, by ignoring it. He waves it away, saying that randomness at the quantum level doesn't matter because at the large scale, everything becomes predictable again. But here's where things get tricky. There's something called computational undecidability. This is when a system can't be predicted, even if you know everything about its current state. It's not just randomness or chaos. It's a type of fundamental unpredictability that even a hypothetical super intelligent being known as Laplace's demon couldn't figure out. Sapolsky seems unaware of this concept, which is a major flaw in his argument. If human behavior is undecidable, then it's fundamentally unpredictable, even with all the knowledge in the world. And that's exactly the kind of freedom we need to say that free will exists. In the end, Sapolsky's book, Determined, doesn't do what it sets out to do. It fails to disprove free will. Instead, it's a collection of half-formed ideas and contradictions. Sapolsky tries to use science to dismiss free will, but he falls short because he misunderstands the deeper philosophical and scientific issues at play. And while the book may sound authoritative, with headlines claiming that Stanford scientist concludes we don't have free will, the reality is far less convincing. Sapolsky's arguments, much like his conclusion, are determined to miss the mark. This video is based on an essay by Stuart Doyle, a PhD student in clinical psychology. It was published in Quillette on the 6th of November, 2023, and you can read it for yourself at quillette.com. Thanks for watching.